Today we're going to be trying a new product here, and this is by Absolute Peak. It's a whetstone knife sharpeners kit. And this is supposed to be an all-inclusive kit to get you into whetstone sharpening. If you've been watching the channel a while, you know I've been sharpening for a long time, and I preach whetstones as being the pinnacle of sharpening, uh, the ultimate way to sharpen anything. And I still stand by that. I was contacted probably a couple months ago, probably just before Christmas actually, and asked if I would have a look at this kit and uh, give an honest review and that is what I'm going to do. I would never turn down an opportunity to try out a new whetstone because I just love them so much. I can never have enough. I want a full shelves filled with whetstones. So let's have a look at what's inside. If we read the side of the box here, we have... Uh, box contents, a double-sided whetstone, so that would be a combo stone, a silicone holder, a bamboo base with a non-slip bottom, an angle guide, a microfiber polishing cloth. Now let me also mention, before I get into it, before I forget, because I'm not sure if it's stated here on the box anywhere, once you buy this, you also get a link to a PDF ebook, which I guess you can print off if you wanted to, and uh, it's sort of a how-to, everything to get you started. It's a fairly long ebook, and I was a bit skeptical first when uh, when the person, the representative who contacted me, asked me to have a look at this. I was a bit skeptical about ebooks, what's it going to be like, but I was really impressed. That is the honest truth. I was really impressed reading it. It pretty much covers everything from what to do with your stones, how to find your angles, uh, even covers different types of knife steels, and uh, it was really great. It was pretty much everything in line with what I've been preaching for uh, for the last several years here on the channel. So let's start hauling this apart here. Okay, that's everything out of the box, neatly wrapped. So right here in this sleeve is your microfiber cloth for cleaning up your precious blades. Very nice, but what you'd expect, your standard microfiber cloth. It's very nice. You could use these for your eyeglasses too if you didn't want it for your knives. It's actually really nice, especially those case knives like I have. Uh, they get really smudged up. That mirror finish gets really dirty. Having something like this is nice to keep it clean put that to one side you have one of your angle guides here these are standard I've seen these on uh, a few different sites I've never used one the idea is you clip the back of your blade in here and you lay it flat on your stone and it gives you an angle I'm not totally gone on this uh, maybe I'll play with it later but I'm not really sold on it yet and then we have of course the bread and butter here which is your whetstone. Now this is actually really nice. It comes with this bamboo base which is really nice and solid and has a full rubber bottom here. So here on my notice I can actually slide around this huge granite slab here just with the stickiness. So this is definitely not going to move when you're sharpening. Very nice and then for your stone here these are Rubber. I'm not sure if these are packing for packing, but it helps the stone fit perfectly in the base. So let me just haul those off. So there it is, a really thick stone. If it's a good stone, this is an insane deal because this is such a big, look at that nice big surface. Uh, feels great. Feels and sounds kind of hard. It's a 1,000 and 6,000. So everything you'd need. The beautiful looking stone feels nice. The 6000 feels really lovely. I'm excited to give this a try. I'm going to lay it here in some water to the side right now. Give it a few minutes soaking and, uh, and we're going to give it a try. So I'll let you have a listen here. I always find it interesting to, uh, to check out the porosity of these different stones. Some of, them, some of the ones I have really drink in a lot of water. Let's just see right quick what happens to this one. So This blue is the uh, 1000 side I think, yep. So you can see it drinks in water pretty good. I don't know, I hope you can see that. <laughs> it just sucks it right in. Okay, so let's dip it in. There 
Yeah, she likes to take in water. I'm going to give it, with how much it's soaking in water, I'm going to probably give it at least 10, 12, 15 minutes. Uh, some of my other stones, like my Nanawas, they barely bubble at all, so you know they're not taking in a lot of water anyways. But this one seems like it is, so I'll let it soak for a little bit longer. So the knife being worked on today is the Kershaw 1830. Oh, so sweet. And this knife is really cool. This is my first, I believe, my first uh, like legitimate pocket knife. Definitely my first flipper, but uh, I got this and a buck 110 right around the same time, and they were my first real legitimate pocket knives. Now this knife it has a, an 8 CR13 MOV blade, which is a really common, in, to, in my opinion, a really great everyday user steel. This and uh, VD10 to me is comparable. OS8, they're around the same, around the same caliber in my opinion but uh, a really great steel and just a good middle ground. Now this knife is duller than dull. The last time I used this blade I was shingling a roof and I was using it to uh, <laughs> to cut shingles around the skylight on the roof so the blade is absolutely destroyed. I just used some brake cleaner to clean all the tar off of it. It was still buried in black roofing cement. The stone has stopped bubbling here now and it's gotten I'd say it's almost twice so heavy as it was. I'm going to haul it out here, throw this, uh, this little base back on it, and I guess technically with that rubber base you could use it without this here, because notice it goes all the way around the bottom, so that would be fine. I'm going to use a stone holder because I really like this stone holder. Gets it up, get your hands up off the table. So now this might take a long time, starting at a thousand. For a knife this dull, a thousand is a little bit high, but I'm really interested to see. And I'll be able to tell probably fairly quickly, just by how the stone feels, be able to tell how well it cuts. It has some bite to it, I can tell you that. It grabs a little harder than my wood stock. My Woodstock 1000. This grabs a little harder. She cuts fast. She cuts really fast. Now a lot of times these stones uh, I'll say lower end but I'm not really sure. I don't have a lot of information on it other than the price. A lot of times these stones tend to wear a little faster, so we'll see. Seems pretty good so far. Seems pretty hard. Notice the stone is starting to gum up there. Let me give it a little rinse. Notice that this stone is not moving around at all with that stone holder. Well, I'm not instructing you guys right at this point now. I'm sharpening. Just, just trying to do the job here. Okay, so I'm just finishing up here on the 1000 side. And I've got a few notes for you. First off, it seems like this stone wears pretty slow. It's a pretty hard surface. So it does build up a little bit of residue that I have to keep rinsing off, which is fine doesn't build up a much of a slurry not a big deal just something to note something else to note is that it feels a little more like maybe an 8 to a 900 than a 1000 to me and it cuts like that it cuts really fast I'd say faster than my other 1000 I already own so I'm thinking maybe it acts a little more like a little more like an 800 which is very nice but we'll see now how that uh, how that other side behaves a 6000 which I'm really excited for one other quick note and uh, this would be I guess a little bit of a con but something you wouldn't notice and you were unless you're really experienced with whetstones that is it feels a little bit um, a little bit grainy to me 
like uh, I know my Woodstock 1000 now mind you my Woodstock is three times the price of this one and you just get the stone whereas with this one you get so much my Woodstock you can tell that it's a really homogeneous mixture you don't feel anything other than 1000 grit particle and I find with this one as I'm sliding across once in a while you'll feel like little little bits of different size grit and stuff it doesn't affect your your sharpening process it's just one of those things that probably comes with having a stone that's not quite as expensive the mixture is not quite as refined all that said it did a wonderful job cut really fast and uh, I can't believe how, how good it's running for the price time to switch over to that 6,000 grit side which has been bathing a little bit in some water down in here I'll give it a quick rinse and let's feel how it goes. Maybe I'll give it a little roughing actually with the Nagura first. Again, highly recommend you getting a Nagura. Just to make sure the surface is roughed up. Give it a little rinse. Now that pure white is not quite as pure anymore. Now my Woodstock 1000 grit or 6000 grit is the very best 6000 grit I've ever felt. It's so nice. So this is going to be interesting to try this one. Okay, again we got a little bit of that graininess, but I also notice that this feels a little coarser than a 6,000 and it is cutting a little faster than a 6,000 would. I can tell you right off the bat just finishing up with my last few strokes here now just super light trying to do this stone the very best justice that I can. Now I gotta change what I said again to me, this stone feels even a little coarser than a 4000. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe some of you guys will try it out and have a different opinion. But in my experience, the stones I've tried, this is more like, I'd have to say a 2500. Because I have a 3000 grit nanola, and and it feels coarser than that one to me and the finish is coarser actually let me give you the unstrap side so this side and show you what the finish is like off of it so that is the finish off of that 6000 side stone and notice it's not a gleaming polish it's not shining or shimmery just kind of a dull flat look and my 3000 nanowa uh, you're reflecting light after you leave that stone so so I would say in the 2000s is what it behaves like in my opinion a little bit of strapping here now like I would after using any of my stones and let's see if we have a shaving edge I hope we do I just want to mention this stone package is a fantastic starter kit. It's great for anyone. So just it's a good stone. It seems nice and tough. It cuts really well. Maybe the grits aren't 1,000 and 6,000, but they still act really well as an 800 and a 25, in my opinion. This is all in my opinion, based on years of experience with sharpening and owning and trying lots of different stones. But uh, yeah, this is a great kit and offers so much. It's certainly a lot better than what I started with. I started with a little, uh, the little Smith's sharpening kit with a little Arkansas stone, the other one mounted in the plastic base. <laughs> Just a, a terrible little kit to start with. But I worked so hard with that until I got a shaving edge that when I got my a real good my Woodstock stone it was just a breeze to get a razor's edge I think anyone who gets this stone here 
be really happy with it. And for that price, how could you not give it a try? So that is a nice feeling edge here now. It actually feels beautiful. We're getting a bit of a polish. Let's try a little bit of a shave test. I'm going to try to shave the smallest amount of hair possible. Just enough for you to tell because I don't want bald patches on my arms. You can see that it's definitely a shaving edge. Definitely. Maybe not a buttery smooth shaving edge like you could get off a of 6000. But it is very nice. So there it is, the Absolute Peak Whetstone Sharpening Kit. This is an excellent value for that price. I'd say everyone run out and grab one. Uh, if you're starting, this is a real deal. You've got all kinds of information. You've got that angle guide to help you out. You get that PDF booklet. Uh, it's just a fantastic deal in my opinion. Check out the link down in the description for where to buy. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Comment down below, tell me what you like about this or if you'd be interested in it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We'll see you in the next video.